Alabama the host state this week. Gunnersville the location in Scottsboro, Alabama, the town we are launching from. Goose Pond Colony, that is where all the takeoffs and weigh-ins are happening this week at Lake Gunnersville. Such the 26th time that we've been here for a Bassmaster event, almost 10 times for Elite Series, multiple classics as well. Lake Gunnersville always shows out and in a different way. We see similar areas, but we often see a lot of different baits. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie Moore here with Mike Sukon. A lot of different ways Gunnersville can show out. And we've seen the monster fish, Ronnie. The guys came in and practiced saying, I don't know exactly where I'm going to find the flirt. The schools weren't downward. The sun, summer haunts. And we had to go up shallow and, and uh, do a mixture of things to find a bass. Which is going to be very interesting. Which pattern will prevail? Will it be the shallow anglers? Will it be the deep anglers? A mixture of both. Maybe some shad spawn, some top water. A lot of things happening. And Steve Kennedy messed around with a big bait. A big swim bait, which we expect, but he's Always. also been doing uh, a flipping program. And then we got to see him with a spinning rod as well, ultra shallow. And Such, this may look a little different to some folks because they know Lake Gunnersville and they've seen it before in past events. But the water's much clearer and that is because of all of that eelgrass has filtered a lot of it, made it almost crystal clear like Northern Lake. And they haven't had any inflowing water recently. We haven't had the rains to bring in any, any muck and, and uh, dirty it up a little bit. Which truly is surprising because just 10 days ago or so, we had to postpone an event down the road because of high water and massive influx of rain. The fact that the rain came in and did not affect the clarity shows you what the grass has done to this ecosystem. Steve Kennedy, a guy that we always watch when big fish are around, and especially in his state of Alabama where he resides. Todd Auden, basically a year and a couple months ago, he was one or two big bites away from maybe taking home the Bassmaster Classic on this two very big lake. bites. Yeah. Second place runner-up finish at the 50th Bassmaster Classic. Biggest payday ever. Had a big seven pounder in a 21 pound day one run. Third of his weight out of one fish. A little bit of a slow day for Auten. You know, he's one of those guys that's lingered in our top 20 all day long without a limit. That is very crucial. Getting five fish to your limit is going to be huge. Every bass this week has to be 15 inches. And for Auten, he needs a couple more to really feel comfortable in making that charge into the top 10. Well, you got to have those duplicate performances, Ronnie. You, you can't just he thought he was way bigger than he was. We got to see Brian New, our Rookie of the Year contender and Elite Series champion from the first event at the St. John's River. He really got off to a hot start, and that's interesting. All the different techniques pl playing and the areas and the styles of fishing uh, suits that the timing is important. Some guys getting off to an early start in the morning like Brian New, some guys having late flurries in the afternoon like Yeah, Brandon we Palmer. saw a lot of people take over the lead because they got limits really quickly. I don't know if it's all shad spawn, but it was responsible for a lot of the fish catches in the afternoon. Other, the other bites are, are turning on and we're having flurries. It really, safer. whether it is a shad spawn or not, that morning time period as you make your way towards the summer is always the most active time of day for the fish. And then there's always that midday window that opens up. This morning, we saw Jason Christie get off to a great start. A couple quick fish on a frog. And we thought, this is what we're going to see all day long. He did go through a little bit of a lull in the middle of his day. Only had three or four fish for a while. And then he switched it up. He, we didn't know he owned a spinning rod suit. Oh, we didn't know that, yeah. <laughs> he pulled a spinning rod out and maybe, was able huh? to really upgrade, and he is going to be one to watch tomorrow as we have our coverage of the top 10. We should have a camera in his boat as well. You're not bringing him in. you got to try everything in your arsenal, right, Ronnie? And he has really been one that he's fishing similar areas and similar water as some of our leaders and other guys. But he doesn't have the pressure directly that I feel like other other anglers have. He's got a couple areas to himself. Found himself a little sneak, sneak pole, huh? And he's been able to use that light line on his wacky rig setup. Yeah, they keep saying they've never seen guns the water this clear. It does. I mean, it does look like a Cayuga or a northern event, almost like you saw last year. The St. Lawrence River, Brock Mosley catches a, almost a seven pound largemouth, and you can see it swimming under the dock, how clear it was. 
That is what some of the areas on Gunnersville look like, and we mentioned the timing. Brian New, quick start early. So did Jason Christie. Brandon Polinick, not so much. More of a late bloomer. <laughs> Yesterday, he really racked up bash track the final, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of the day. And then today, midday, man, what a flurry for him. Basically, every other cast for 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, Ronnie, we left live, and he still had a little while to fish, and he caught two big ones to get over 20 pounds, one of three bags over 20 pounds on day one. Polinick coming off a win at the James River, a Bassmaster Opens victory. One level that he had never accomplished a win at. Been so close so many times in the Opens level, and he was able to skirt over from Neely Henry, win and open, and come right back to the state of Alabama for Lake Gunnersville. And he's doing well once again, looking for another blue trophy on the Elite Series level. A guy who also won in the off week in between Neely Henry and Lake Gunnersville, Chris Johnston. Him and his brother went to the Sturgeon Bay Open up north, took home a title there. I believe they're third in that event. And then came down and really just kept the momentum flowing, catching them really good this week. Yeah, he's our first Canadian to win an elite event last year at where we're going again at the end of July, St. Lawrence River. And his pattern is very interesting. He was one of the guys that got off to a great start oh, yesterday baby. in the morning, fishing kind That's of a school of fish, a group of fish early and he caught a bunch of them a lot with a spinning rod as well and then when the sun got high and he kind of kept catching the same size fish he decided to go to this area fish some lily pads and some grass with a frog and man did he make some upgrades he, he, he had two, two of the bigger the uh, bigger bass this afternoon yeah, really nice, one we looking for. nice fish on his right there. one of them right there trying to get into the angler of the year conversation started a little behind set fighter but fighter is keeping ground, he's maintaining. And that door's always gonna be open when there's time on the clock for Elite Series competition, but we were wondering, will an angler win this event doing one specific thing? We've seen Caleb Kupal hold the lead after day one, a 27-10 bag on day one, Thursday of this event. Today, not as big of a bag, but still a pretty solid lead. Will someone like a Chris Johnston doing two different things be able to rope him in over the next couple days of competition? Or a guy like Brandon Polinick fishing totally opposite? Will he have a shot to catch him? Kufal was worried that he had Oops. fished out his area as well as company in there, Ronnie. And uh, he caught a few from there and moved on to his secondary spots and uh, put together a pretty decent bag, enough to, to maintain a nice lead. Very interesting. His selection of, of spots early in the morning, sharing it with a couple other great anglers at Flipping Grass and was really outperformed those anglers. We're gonna have fish catches rolling in before the weigh-in and we're gonna see that leaderboard continue to change. The highlights from day two couldn't have gotten any better. We saw a diverse way of catching them which means the weekend is gonna be amazing. Saturday, starting at 7.30 a.m. on Bassmaster.com, and the real show, big time, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time on Fox Sports 1. We'll catch you on TV and the internet Saturday and Sunday.